Hi there, my name's Vince from MyMateVince.com and in this video today we're going to be trying to fix this Sony Walkman. So I've been doing a Walkman Fix It series, this is going to be episode number 5. I basically bought 8 of these off eBay, a job lot, and they work out at uh, £5.37p each. Now this particular model here is a WM-FX463. Now I didn't find any information about it online, but one eBay seller said it was from 1997, so I'm going to go with that. It does look to be around that era, it looks to be quite late as far as a Walkman's concerned because this one has quite a lot of features on it. So that's what we're going to be running with there. So that's the model number there. So now with this one, I've been mucking around with it just to see if it works or not. I can get the time up here and it looks like when you press here that the radio is working because we can go across to different bands and stuff like that but yet there's no sound coming out of here and also the wheels are not going around when we press play so if I press play now if you have a look in there you can see that they're not turning but if you listen carefully I can definitely hear like something's turning. So maybe it's just a belt that's gone, but more importantly, there's no sound coming out of this. So even when I fix the belt, it's not gonna work because if you listen to this now, I've got a little speaker here. And if I plug this into here, and if we go to the radio, you can't hear anything at all. And if we put the volume up full, that's up full, that's up full, and there's absolutely nothing happening at all. You can see it's trying to tune. But then when it stops on something, there's no sound. So the sound's not transferring through. And also, if you have a look here, it does look like this kind of, looks kind of burnt up here. I don't know whether something's been spilt on it. I'm not too sure. So I think the best thing to do is take this apart and then see what uh, see what see what's happening on the inside if it's just a belt thing we can sort that out and uh, we'll have to have a look to find out why there's no volume coming out of it but i think just get it apart to begin with and then we'll worry about what's happening now if you have a look closely they have put kind of little arrows where you need to go so if you look in here you can see that there's a tiny little arrow just here and also uh where is it now here and here and also here so it kind of tells you where you need it to take it apart. Now normally when I do this, I use a little metal tool, but this time I'm gonna use one of these things because then hopefully I might cause less damage to it. So I got these in a mobile phone screen replacement kit. They're kind of like a little guitar plectrum, but this one's just a lot thicker. So I'm gonna start from this bit here because that's the easiest part to get into, and then I'm gonna work my way along. And then I'm hoping most of it will just uh, unclip Right, so that looks like it's ready to pop out. We just have to do the inside bit now. So I'm gonna just get a screwdriver, poke in these three bits here, and hopefully the bottom will come out. Actually, I'll just use one of these. There we go. Excellent, so that's come out really easy. Right, so I'm just having a quick look. Let's zoom in here now. Can't, first impressions, I can't see a load of corrosion anywhere. So this is the headphone jack up here. Oh yes I can, actually yes I can. Look at the, uh, look the headphone jack's very close to here and this is very badly corroded so obviously the batteries have leaked so maybe corrosion's got onto the contacts off the headphone jack and maybe that's why it's not working. I actually forgot to show you around the outside of it. So what we have is there's a uh, a volume switch here, so that's on the back here to make it quieter, to stop it going over, you know, a, a, a limiter. And we've got this one's a bit more fancy, so we've got it looks like we've got this auto reverse. So you know when the tape gets to the end, normally you have to open it up and swap it over to side B. Well, I believe if you were just to do this, if memory serves me correct, it will automatically then when it gets to the end of the tape, go round and play the next side. Direction here means which side you want to play. So for example, again, on the older models, you have to press play. If you want to play the other side, you have to open it up. While I think with this one, you can just flip the switch and then when you press play, it's going to play the other side. So that's quite good. Uh, we've got a volume here. We've got the, uh, the chrome tape thing here and also mono and stereo. 
and uh, we've got 20 presets so at the front here we've got quite a few so basically if you have a look at radio every time I press radio it will go to I don't know, let me get out of that enter thing oh, okay well there's no batteries in it now is there obviously but anyway you press the radio and then we have FM 1, 2 and 3 so that would be 15 presets 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and then we also have AM as well so that would be another 5 presets so you can have up to 20 radio stations set in this and other thing we have is this mega boost and groove so when we press this you get this little display that goes up here and then again there's no batteries in it but I'll show you later and I'm, I'm thinking that each one of them will produce a different sound so mega bass is going to be more bassy don't know what groove is but this thing looks like it's quite it's advertised so maybe it messes around with something and then creates a different sound right so that's uh, I'm happy that there's corrosion now and I'm happy it's by the headphone jack because that will mean we've got a uh, a chance, you know, that there's a chance now that that's why it's not working, which is good. So let's undo this. And we've got some ribbon cables here. Let's, let's see how these work. Okay, so with the ribbon cables, it looks like I have to lift up this bit here. It looks like I'm lifting this black bit up towards the ribbon cable, like that. And then that should come out, like so. Nice, I'm just going to pop that back in to make it stronger. And this ribbon cable here, do I have to push it out? Yeah, there you go. So that one there just had to be pushed down. So with this one, you just need to push it away, well, towards the ribbon cable like that. Then that will come out. There we go. And again, I'm just going to push that back in to give it strength. So this should now come out. There, okay, well you can see straight away that the belt is broken. Let me zoom out a little bit. You can see that the belt is broken, so that's good. There we go, it's all wrapped around there. Okay, it's not as, uh, it's not as gooey, it's still got a bit of elasticity to it. Normally they're really, really gooey, but I suppose this one is kind of 10 years younger than some of the other Walkmans that I were doing. Right, I'm just looking at this headphone jack here. Now I know this battery contact's very corroded, but the headphone jack itself kind of looks to be okay. Yeah, the corrosion doesn't look like it's spread over that far, so maybe it's not related to that. This is something to do with the volume, maybe? Well, I think what we'll do to begin with is, let's just go with what, we've, what we see, and we know that at this moment in time, the, uh, the belt's gone. So let's change the belt over, and then we'll see what's happening. I'm just going to get a rough measurement from the old one. Obviously, it's all been stretched, but it would just give me an idea about how big the belt should be. Yeah, I don't know which way it's, it's supposed to go, whether it's supposed to go this way around or around this. I'm going to try that and see, uh, see what happens. Cable connectors look nice and strong. It doesn't look like they're going to break that easy. Okay, well that's turning. Let's see now if we get anything out of it. Right, so let's put the auto reverse on and let's see if it does go round. So let's uh, rewind it, play. Okay, so I'm thinking that's gone round. Well, I can see it turning just here if you have a look in that window. So let's see if I can see it in the camera here. I'm going to go 
the other direction now with this direction button here. Yeah, look, it's gone the other way. And back. Hold on now. Yeah. Excellent. Right, so that's... Uh, that appears to be working. Let's plug in the speaker. Let's see if we have anything. Nothing. So there's definitely a problem with the volume. Right, that's going to be hard to work out now. But I have to get it working. And it's none of the other switches. I'm just going to put my headphones in just to see if there is anything. No, so there's no sound whatsoever. So this is definitely a new fault for me. And uh, right now, I actually don't know what could possibly be wrong with it. So let's get rid of all these belts, because uh, I, I don't know whether... I'll leave these belts out. I don't know if it's going to be okay or not, because I can't hear it to see if, the, if, to see if it sounds too slow or too quick. Now, the only thing I can go by is the fact that there is a lot of corrosion right by that headphone jack there. So I think I'm going to start my efforts on the headphone jack. Maybe see if there's continuity between it, between that and the board. This little replacement 3.5 millimeter jack, that's so if you want to make your own cables. Now I've got it from CPC. This is a four pole one, but uh, it will be absolutely fine. I just won't worry about the, the fourth pole. So basically what it means is that normally, with a normal headphone connector, you will see it's three pole. So you will have the tip, and then you will have a couple of rings. So it will basically be, uh, one of them will be like the ground, one will be the left audio, and one will be the right audio. And then on a four pole one, you've got the left and right audio, just like this one, but you will also have a microphone as well. So I think it depends. There's two different standards. Apple uses one, and then everybody else just uses the other. So for example, this might be the ground on Apple, and this might be the microphone, and on others, this will be the microphone, and this will be the ground. I'm not sure about the exact uh, orientation of them, but you can look that up online if you're interested. But all I want to know is, is there continuity between these bits here and the inside of it here. So with this here, it's going to be the small one on the inside is going to relate to this one here, and then this one will relate to the next one, this one will relate to this one, and then this one will be this one here. I'm just going to double check that with my meter. Then you've got this one, which is that one. And then these two are the same, so that's the same as this one here. Right, okay, so I, I need to worry about... Okay, so it is these three that I need to worry about. So if you have a look on this one here, it goes to here. This one goes to here. But I can't find where this one goes to. Oh, here we go, there. That's oh, so it goes to there. Right, okay. So they all are making a contact. So that says to me, it's not a problem, but it's not a problem with the jack itself, it's before that. It's before that. Oh, of course, and that top bit's there. Right, okay, yeah, that makes sense. That top bit there, that presses against the end. Is here. Right, okay, so we're gonna have to start working back from there, aren't we? Have to work back from there. So with the volume, we've got a load of pins here load of pins on here. So in theory, if I was to turn it, I should be getting different readings on here, shouldn't I? 
So those pins are going to correspond to these ones here. Between those two points, it definitely makes a difference where you have the, the volume switch. So that says to me that the, the switch itself is working as far as those two points are concerned. The problem is we've got loads of other points. It's changing between those two points as well. Right, well that's, uh, it's, it's changing something. So I don't believe it's the actual switch itself. The, uh, I don't believe it's the volume part itself because it is doing something. Why is this not outputting any sound? What makes the sound? So it comes from the, uh, it comes from the, it comes from vibrations in here, doesn't it? From the, uh, you know, the, the, uh, the tape head, the head itself. That thing there. So then it must travel up through this ribbon cable or this ribbon cable possibly. Maybe it's through this ribbon cable here. Well, I don't know. I don't know. I'm just going to go across some of the capacitors and stuff and see if I can see anything that's obviously wrong somewhere. So although the battery contact is very rusty, it is actually making a contact. So if I go between the end here and where the rusty pin that soldered onto the board, if you listen, it is actually making a contact. I'm finding it hard to trace back from the middle pin on the 3.5 millimeter jack. I've got it going to here, but I don't know where it goes to after that. Well, I haven't spent long looking at it, but I can't see anything obvious that's wrong. I know there's corrosion here, but it doesn't seem to be on the board. And I can't trace the, uh, the tracks back from here because they just they just disappear. So what I'm going to do is just keep working on this and if I find out what's wrong then I'll uh, get back to the video. Okay so I've got the speaker plugged in, I've got the batteries in and I'm on the radio at the moment, doesn't matter whether it's radio or tape. Just out of interest you can see the graphic equaliser thing there, you see? Mega bass, groove and normal. And it doesn't matter what I do, there's absolutely no sound coming out of this at all. And it, there's no static or anything, even if I go to the radio. So if I go to the radio now, I should be getting a lot of noise. And I can put pressure on here, I can turn this. So if it was a faulty switch here or in here, you think that by wiggling it around I would get something. Getting nothing. Which is really weird. If I'm honest with you, I don't know what to do. I don't know enough about them. I don't know where the actual sound is, where does it go from the vibrations on here. Well, forget about the vibrations on there. It's nothing to do with that because, so it's nothing to do with the ribbon cable because the, uh, the radio isn't working either. So, I don't know, do these have some sort of sound chip? I'm just putting pressure everywhere just to see if there's any kind of like bad connection. nothing at all. I think I'm gonna to have to look to Google for this one see if there's any answers out there because I don't know what I'm looking at and because of that it's impossible for me to fault find and I haven't got another one of the same type to try and get measurements between the two. If I had another one side by side I might be able to sort of try uh, I don't know swapping a few things out. I mean it must be a problem with the boards mustn't it? It must be on the board somewhere. Okay, I'm going to uh, do a bit of hunting around, see if I find anything, and then I'll get back to the video. 
Okay, so I've been doing a little bit of testing and I can't actually find really anything obvious, but there is one thing. I'm kind of concentrating up by this corrosion here because I'm thinking that's the only thing I can see wrong. The rubber belt's going to go because it's, it's got a lot of age to it, so I'd expect that to go. But the only visual thing I can see wrong is the corrosion around here. So now I've been testing the capacitors on the board and there's only one capacitor that I've, I mean, some of them aren't testing anything, but that could be just my meters, uh, but there is one capacitor that doesn't look like it's testing correctly, and it is very close to this corrosion. So basically, I've got my multimeter just set to here, so when I touch the wires together, you can hear the noise, so it's continuity. Now let me zoom right in, and uh, let me just show you this. Right, so you can see we're down the very bottom of the board here, this is where the rusty connector is, and there's these two, little components here which I think are capacitors. Uh, I don't know, I mean it says BAT negative next to it but that might be something else. But if you have a look here, I'm just getting my grounds from this point here. Yeah, so I'm just getting my ground from there. It looks like this here is also a ground, maybe that's what the battery negative means. But if you watch this now, so I'm doing one leg to ground and if I go onto this capacitor here, it's going to short on one side. So not that side, that side. But on this one, it's shortened on both sides. Now just to show you if I go across a few others, so if you have a look at this one here for example, nothing but something, uh, this one here, nothing. Okay, so that's not doing anything on either of them. Uh, let's try this one, nothing, something. Did I just do that one before? Apologies. Let's try this one here. So can you see on one leg I've got continuity? But on that one, I've got uh, both of the, 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 sorry, when I say leg, that's because I <laughs> used to be a telephone engineer. I've got continuity on both sides of it to earth, which I, to, to ground, which I don't think is correct. I'm wondering whether a bit of corrosion has got along and under here and is causing it to short to ground. So what I'm going to do is, let's zoom back out, I think I'm going to just get my soldering iron and I think I'm going to pop that capacitor off or I think I might get my heat station. I should be able to do it for solder nine. I'm gonna get my solder nine, I'm gonna pop that capacitor off, and then I'm gonna have a go on the pads underneath and see if they're short into ground, see if that makes a difference. Now the other things I've been looking at is these chips here. So basically I've gone online and there's very little information because most people that were fixing these did it before the days of the internet. So there's not really that much information out there. There's a few kind of forums where people say to change over the caps. Uh, but on here, I mean, to me, I'm not saying the caps are not faulty, maybe they are, but they're not bulging. I can't see any staining underneath or anything. So basically I have got a few caps here, one here, this one, this one, this one, so I've got four caps here. Obviously there's loads of surface caps, the SMD caps down here, but these are the bigger electrolytic ones. But I can't see any bulging off their caps, and also I don't see any staining on the board underneath, so I don't think they're faulty, but they could be. So that might be something I could look at. But again, when I go across those with my uh, meter, just testing one leg, one uh, side to, work, to ground, they are all going to ground okay. And when I go across them with voltage, I am measuring voltage on some of them, but not, I think not this one and not this one. So that could be an indicator of something. But the only thing that's jumping out at me so far is this little thing down here. And this might be absolutely nothing, but I think it's worth me having a look at it just in case. Now the other thing I've been looking at is the chips, because a lot of people say if it isn't the capacitors, they're saying it's the, the preamp, the amplifier chip. Now I've looked, I've got three chips here. Let me just zoom in on them. So I've basically got this chip here. Now apparently this chip, because I, I scribbled this all down, this chip here I think is to do with the a FM and AM radio. This chip on this side here is to do with the capstan reel and motor drive. Yep. So that must power the motor. And this one here is, let me read it out, a pre-amplifier plus power amplifier IC. So this is the one here that looks like it's dealing with the, uh, the amplifying because you would think it's an amplifying issue because I'm not getting any sound. But yet, when I put a voltage into it, it's supposed to be pin one. Pin one here is supposed to be powering. You've got VCC on pin seven, 
pin eight is power out. I think pin nine might be mute because it's a mute. See, what, what it could be is it has a mute feature, which is basically to save your ears when you're stopping the tape and fast forwarding tape, apparently there's like a pop. And to save that pop going into your ears, or it can, it can damage equipment if you were to use this headphone jack as like a line out, then it puts a mute feature on it. And what could be happening is, if this chip is faulty, it could be putting the mute feature on all the time. And that's what it kind of sounds like. So I, uh, I don't know, but I did go across there with my meter, tested a few voltages. Again, I don't know what I'm looking for, but I am, everything is reading something where I think it should be. So the voltage in, when I press play, it's reading something. When I take my hands, when I stop it, the reading disappears. And on the power out, I've got something. And then when I press play, it uh, disappears. In fact, I'm quickly gonna show you that now. Let me just put these ribbon cables back in. Okay, so that's plain. So if I go to set my meter to voltage, uh, I'm gonna show you this now, let me zoom out. Right, so I'm just gonna be going across this chip here. So I've got this set to DC volts. And if I was to, for example, go to VCC, which I believe is the, uh, that be voltage in, I don't know, but that's pin seven. So one, two, and, and this is pin one here. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. This one here, okay? So I'm gonna, if you have a look at the moment, you can see it's just like 0.1 volts, but yet when I press play, There you go, see one volt. So it's doing something. And then if I was to press stop, I'll try to do it now while I'm on the chip. That's not gonna happen, hold on. There you go, and it drops down. And if I was to go to power in, which is pin one, so this is an easy one for me to do, you can see that uh, it's reading point one and now 1.6. So it's doing something, isn't it? And even if I go to power out, so there's power out one, power out two. I think with this chip here, it's designed for the auto reverse. So I suppose it's gonna be more complicated than other Walkmans because it's gotta do where, where you can play both sides of the tape. So maybe it has to flip things over so it can play both ways. So maybe that's why there's two powers, I don't know. But if I go to power out one, which is number four, This one here, again, if you have a look, so 0.1 volts, press play, and there we go, one volt. So, I mean, I don't know if that's correct or not, but I'm getting something in and I'm getting something out. Now, obviously, there's 36 pins on here and they all do something. So, uh, I'm not saying it's not faulty. What I'm thinking right now is if it's not this, Obviously it could be any component on the board, but I'm wondering whether this has gone faulty. The only thing is, because the corrosion happens here, I'm just kind of going by that because everything else looks perfect. This doesn't look like it's been water damaged or anything like that. And the battery leak isn't a bad one because I can't see it's going all the way down here. So I'm wondering whether it is just playing up with this little bit here. But then again, could that one capacitor be enough to give no sound completely. What people are saying is when the caps start to go, that it will be, uh, there will be a lack of volume. Well, with this, there's just nothing at all, but I don't know the background of this. Maybe beforehand there was, maybe it has been getting quieter and quieter for a while, not sure. But let's pop this little bit out anyway. Okay, so I'm zoomed right in. I'm just gonna put a tiny bit of flux on it, just to help it a little bit. And I've got my soldering iron set to 400 degrees C. Let's see if I can remove this.
No, I managed to remove the other one though. Wow, okay, it's interesting how I did the wrong one. Just going to put that to one side. There we go. Okay, let's get the multimeter now and see if it's still shorting to ground. No, it's not. Look at that. Oh, yes, it is. No, it's not. Or is it? Hold on. Let me go to the original one that I was doing. Let's do this one first, the good one. Right, nothing there. But something there. Something here. And something here. Right, okay, so that's interesting. So, it's, uh, it's happening anyway, isn't it? Now I'm just going to go on the actual capacitors, just on the... Well, actually, I'm not going to be too small for me to test. Let me see. Right, it says 0.11 mf. So, 0.1, is that nanofarad? Let me try this one here. Sorry, let me just move this so you can see what I'm doing. Point one two NF. So I think those capacitors are okay. So I'm just going to pop pop them uh, pop them back on. That's annoying. I thought it might be as easy as that. So there's obviously something else causing the shorts. What could that be? Or is it even a short? Maybe it's supposed to be like that. That's the problem. I haven't got another board. If I had another board to compare with, then I could I could do that, but I haven't. See, realistically now. I've got nothing else to go on because I can't find any other thing that's obvious with it. I'm just cleaning up with a bit of IPA. Try to get rid of all that burnt flux to make it look a little bit, uh, <laughs> a little bit nicer. While I'm here, I'm just going to clean everything on this side, just where the corrosion was, just in case. In case there's something that's gone under everything else. Oh, I forgot to mention earlier that I did put some contact cleaner in this volume control here and also squirted it into the 3.5mm jack. Yeah, so it's testing exactly the same as it did before. So hopefully I haven't made it any worse. I know it doesn't look as neat as it did. Okay, so I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to take out those capacitors and see what they're reading, just in case. Just in case one of them is faulty. And uh, I suppose it's worth a try. So I'm just going to be fast forwarding through all this. So it looks like on the board here, they put a little circle where the negative is because on the capacitors, you can see that the negative side is here and there's a circle there. So at least I know which way to put it back. Right, okay, so I tested each of those capacitors. I took them out of the circuit. I tested them for ESR. I tested them on this little thing here to say what the capacitance was and I double checked and I did it on my meter as well. Now, they were all a little bit out, but not too bad. So I think the worst one was, I think this big one here, and this was reading 220, yeah, sorry, this should be 220 UF. And I think on this thing here, it was registering 189 UF, which is out, but I mean, I don't know how much out these can be, whether it's 10% or 20% or 5%. But what I'm thinking is, it'd be different if the volume was low, the very fact that we haven't got any hiss, any volume whatsoever, makes me think personally it's not the capacitors. 
So uh, they were all kind of testing. They were all testing close enough for me. You know, I mean, I I don't really know, do I? But I'm thinking that if they were completely shorted, then fair enough. But if it's just a case that they're just reading a little bit out of range, then I don't think it would be enough to make it stop working completely. So what am I going to do? Really don't know what else to do on this one because I can't swap any chips out or anything. See, I've got another three Walkmans to do, so there's a chance that if another one's faulty, I might be able to take the chip out and then swap it over and then see if that fixes it, in which case then I know it's the chip. The other thing I could do is I have got four working Walkmans. I could take them apart to see if it's the same chip in there and then that could be an option to swap it over, but this is the first one I've got, I believe. In fact, I know this is the first one that I've got that does the auto reverse. So I'm thinking that that chip is dedicated for the, well it's not dedicated, but it's a chip that's advertised for working with auto reverse. So the other ones I don't think would have that, but it might be worth, is it even worth looking? I'll tell you what I'm gonna do, rather than take apart the other ones because I risk breaking them, I think I'm gonna watch my videos back and see if I can recognize that chip on any or one of my other videos. So that's what I'm gonna do. A couple of these wires have fallen off here, so I'm just gonna solder these back on now while I'm here, and then I'll get back to the video and let you know what I'm doing. Okay, I took apart this one here because this is also a modern one and I was watching the video back and the chip did look similar. I, I found it kind of hard to get a still where I could read the information off it. But unfortunately, when I took this one apart now, the chip has a different number on it and more importantly as well, this has got 12 pins on each side while this one here has only got nine pins on each side. So although this might well be the amplifier chip, it's different than this one here. So there's not really much else I can do with this one. Unfortunately, it has beaten me. This video is gonna be a failure, but it's not to say I won't fix it again in the future once I have more knowledge. So for example, somebody watching this might be like, yeah, I've got this model, exactly the same thing happened to me, and it is capacitor number, blah, blah, blah. Or it is the IC, this one here, or this one here, or this one here. I'm thinking it's something to do with this chip because this is the thing that does the amplifying. It was called a pre-amplifier plus power amplifier IC. And that to me seems like it's the problem. So some people might say, well, you should clean the tape head. There's no point because it's not working on the radio either. So if there was any problem with the tape side of it, but it worked on the radio, then I would think it's something to do with the tape head or something, but it's not. It's not doing, I mean, there might be a problem with that, but it's not doing the tape head or the radio. So that says to me, it's purely a problem with the amplifying of the sounds. And now with the belt changed, everything is spinning correctly. The radio is looks like it's tuning in when I uh, go to the different bands and stuff. And when I hold down tuning, it does stop at different ones. So I think if I had to take an uneducated guess, I would say there's a problem with this chip here or possibly one of the capacitors or something around it. But I don't know which one it is. And my testing is not showing anything up. If I had another board exactly the same next to it, then I could go across each of them and it might flag up something different. But I can't find it. So I changed this one here. That was the only, th not changed. I took it off and put it back on again. This was the only thing that I seen that was different. I checked all the unsoldered and checked all the capacitors, the electrolytic ones, and they're all looking okay. They're all, you know, they're not perfect, but they're, I don't think that's the problem. So unfortunately, I'm gonna to have to call it a day on this one, but I've got another three to do, and by the time I do the other three, then I might have more knowledge, and I might be able to come back to this one, or somebody watching it might tell me, and then I can revisit it in at a later stage. So unfortunately, this little Sony FX463 has beaten me for now, but maybe I might be able to get it later. So uh, yeah, apologies that I couldn't get it to work. Hopefully you still did enjoy the video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and please look out for my other three videos that I need to do on the Sony Walkman. Take care, bye now.